All right, we're back to Chapter 5, Video 11. We're going to carry on with the loan payment. And in this video, now, we're going to clean up the code that you were given to include um, the valid data validation, which is really a topic we talked about in Chapter 4. But we're going to be using our uh, nested decision structures to accomplish that. So now we've already kind of explained how the program works. So we've had to declare some variables. And when it comes to assigning, uh, we have to think about, you know, is it possible that the user could actually do some sort of input error? Well, when it comes to the present value, we don't know what they could type in. They could type numbers or letters. That could, letters will cause a problem. So we want to test for that. Uh, the annual percentage rate would be the same thing. They could do that wrong. The term, on the other hand, is already fixed. They're constants, and they can only select the data. So this one here, we don't have to have any invalid data functionality here. And then years, of course, we would have to do that as well. So to get started here, I'm going to actually just get the term out of the way. I'm going to assign uh, the term value, and I don't have to try to parse it because there's no possible way that they can get an input error wrong. It's just from the choices inside of the combo box. So that's not a problem. But start at the top here, the present value. The present value could be typed in incorrectly. So I'm going to put in a condition statement, and we're going to try to parse it. Into a, into a number, into a double. But if we can't, then let's throw out an error. So I chose, because we've got one, two, three of these, I'm going to use a nested if structure, which is an if, um, else if, um, or sorry, an if, and then if, if, and then else, else, else. So the reason they call it nested is kind of like, you can see it's bowed here. It's an if within an if within an if. And that's why they call it nested. Now. If we take the first user's input, the present value, and we try to parse it, and we are not successful, this will throw out a Boolean value of, of a false, and it would fail this. It would drop down to the else and display a message invalid present value, and I'm telling them what they should do. I also clean out the, the old error, and I set the focus to help the user accomplish that. Now, if they, if they do it right, and they enter in the correct value, I'm just going to go down to the next option, which is APR, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to basically say, take the APR, try to parse it, uh, oops, this one here, and put it into the APR, APR. Now, the third one is the years, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, if all three of those pieces of data get entered correctly, it's not going to throw individual exceptions uh, to the program. So I can go ahead and calculate. In this version, I've actually broken things down a little further. Instead of having one long calculation, I calculated the number of years, I calculate the APR calculation, and then I calculate the, the, the actual payment formula itself to calculate PMT. Now, with PMT, though, um, because it's outside the scope of the program, um, I didn't declare my, my PMT variable inside of my, I put it outside and I put it in something called the form variables. So that means that if I put it up outside just below the class declaration here, um, it's declared and available to all um, methods here within inside of the form class. So now I can do a calculation here called, let's calculate um, an output the payment back onto the form. So a little extra little tricky uh, feature here is that the, the PMT could not be declared as a local variable. It had to be declared outside of the, the event handler method here. So I just put it up into what they call a, a form level, which is just up at the top. Oop, not that one. Uh, form level variables. And I've got two in here, actually. I've got another one coming up. Uh, and I called it the PMT and I declared it as a double. All right, well, I hope that kind of wraps up. And I'd like you guys to go in there and uh, reformulate the code that I gave you to consider data validation. And all of your assignments from now on should probably consider data validation when we're doing this. All right, just a quick little demo on that. So if I enter in $35,000 at 2, of course, that's incorrect. And so I've got one piece of incorrect data. When I calculate it, it says the APR is incorrect. It then cleans it out and wants the correct one back in there. And then it calculates it correctly. If I did that for years and I calculate it, it says that the invalid for years and it calculates uh, incorrectly. And finally, uh, if I do that for the payment or the, the present value, it does the same thing. All right, we'll see you in the next video.